Good morning. Are you ready for a little coffee and colored gemstone talk? I am. My name is Cynthia Renee. And what I wanted to talk today or about is some of aspects of gemstone connoisseurship, at least colored gemstone connoisseurship. You know, uh, if you have any comments or any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments section because I'd really like to know what your questions are and I'd like to get to know you better and for you to get to know me. I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live every day between now and December 15th at 10 a.m. Eastern. Catch it when you can. I would love it. Add comments when you can too. Now, De Beers has been very good about creating the four C's for marketing diamonds. You know, the De Beers Diamonds Four C's are color, cut, clarity, and carrot, meaning weight. You know, but think about that. It doesn't really apply to colored gemstones. Diamonds are very simple, like carbon, right? It's carbon, very simple chemically. And colored gemstones are much more chemically complex, and there's a whole wide variety of colored gemstones that form in a lot of different geological environments and that have a whole list of chemical uh, chemicals in their composition, such as, you know, like tourmaline. It has so many chemicals in its composition. And because they are so much more complex, there's much more of a chance for inclusions to be caught up in them during the crystallization process. Now these inclusions, we don't think of them as flaws per se. We think of them as telling stories that you're letting us know about the gemstones liquid past and where it came from, what it's been through. Looking at those inclusions can tell us whether it's a, you know, a, a fake gemstone or one that's natural from the ground. It can tell us if that gemstone is from, that ruby is from Burma or from Mozambique or from Thailand or Sri Lanka. They can tell us, um, you know, whether it's been adulterated in some way, like artificially colored, or whether it's been heated to purify its color, which is a standard trade practice and so forth. So those inclusions really do add a lot of information for us. With colored gemstones, we're more concerned about the inclusions, what placement within the gemstone, its type of, of inclusion and the position of the gemstone, and whether that inclusion is going to create a structural defect that will affect its durability, something that would keep you from wearing it as, uh, as easily. Now, these think about like, this is a tag that I got off a Donna Karen blouse. I didn't buy the blouse, but it was an 850 Donna Karen blouse, silk blouse. It said, the slight imperfections are characteristic of this yarn and no way are considered as defective, but add to the luxury of a fine silk garment. Hmm. And here's from a Ferragamo purse. Leather can be damaged by humidity. Any irregularities in the color or in the grain are normal characteristics of natural leather. And that is the case for most gemstones too. Here's a piece of fabric, a piece of silk, you know, hand lobe in um, Thailand. And you can see one of the beautiful things about it is the way that the light reflects and sheens off of the silk. Now here's another piece of silk, also Thai silk, and this is hand loomed. This is my friend's business in Thailand, Tim Smith. Her family grows actually the silkworms and then takes the silk and then dyes the silk and weaves it into all sorts of things. And the design of this fabric does cover up some of the irregularities and so forth. And that's what the design in, in gemstone fastenings does too. It helps to, to cover up some irregularities or turn them into a plus. Now, gem, some gemstones, like we categorize them. Um, there are some gemstones that... Uh, we have types of gemstones, like type 1, 2, and 3 through the Gemological Institute of America. And gemstones that are type 1, say like blue topaz, like the blue topaz in this ring. Blue topaz is readily available internally clean with no inclusions. So because of that, if it does have an inclusion, we would expect that to really be reflected in the price. Now, you might really like that inclusion in the gemstone. Good, that's one thing, but you wouldn't pay top price for it, Okay. Now, in other gemstones, like type 2 gemstones, sometimes you're going to see an inclusion in them, like this peridot. This is a big peridot from Burma or Myanmar, and it's uh, about 17 carats. And so if you look closely with a loop, you know, who's going to do that when it's on your hand? You'll see some inclusions in it, but it's nothing that's really affecting its durability. These inclusions are not affecting its clarity. Sometimes these big peridots like this can be kind of velvety or hazy color, and this doesn't have that. It has a crispness. The tanzanite on the side, again, no inclusions. Tanzanite is also readily available in large sizes, free from inclusions. So if you see an inclusion in tanzanite, you would expect to pay a lot less. If you see an inclusion in peridot, mm, that's normal. 
you would look at it and say, well, is that inclusion like right on the center of the gemstone where it bugs me or is it off to the side? Is the inclusion have a really interesting geometry and the light sheen in it interesting in such a way that I think it's a bonus, I like it? Or is the inclusion up towards the top and it, I don't know, it looks like it could break off in the corner of the gemstone easily. We would consider that. And other gemstones, emerald and red and pink tourmaline primarily, are considered type three gemstones. They're almost never found without inclusions. It just has to do with the chemistry of the environment that they were found in. So this pink tourmaline, this is actually my ring and it is with emerald, they both have inclusions. And with this ring, I really liked the inclusions. You can't really see them so well in here, but it looks almost like a snow globe. I liked it, I thought it was cool. So I paid a lower price for the gemstone, but the color, you know, the color was so electric. Here's a ring. This is one I finished a few years ago for a client of mine who's also a friend and we meet for dinner and so forth. But she has a lovely, lovely large green garnet on the side, in the middle. Now, if you look closely, there's some inclusions, but it's a stunning, rare thing. And on the side are pink tourmalines. Now, her pink tourmalines really don't have much inclusions in them. So they really match the quality of the, the center stone, the rare green tourmaline. I think that's really pretty. I'm going to photograph it for her. Um, she gave it back to me. And then here's a pair of earrings. I have to get distracted that I did for her too. And they're bronze zircon with blue sapphire. Isn't that pretty? It's like heaven and earth colors, aren't they? And of course, the gemstones swivel a little bit to the side because that's what's fun when you're wearing them, right? They don't swivel and swing around. I don't want that, but just a little movement to the side. She has kind of reddish brown hair. They're beautiful on her. So I was talking about inclusions, wasn't I? So sometimes inclusions are really considered uh, favorable too. Like the last Empress Dowager of China, um, she preferred gemstones that were really included. She wanted particularly like really pink tourmaline that was mined in the San Diego, California area. And she wanted it to show as many inclusions as possible because she said clean gems, she could buy those fakes. She wanted something that really showed nature's handy uh, work. I, I think that's really cool about that. Now, some gemstones, I'm not following my uh, my script here, I'm just letting it rip, but some gemstones, also, we wouldn't have them if it weren't for inclusions. This is tiger's eye, a piece of tiger's eye rough, um, not polished on this side, polished on this side, but can you see this sheen? Um, tiger's eye forms when there's a mineral asbestos, and tiger's eye, the quartz, can come in after it and replace the asbestos and replicate its crystal structure. So there's no asbestos in tiger's eye, but there's really cool a sheen to it, huh? And it, we wouldn't have that if it weren't for inclusions. Now, sometimes gemstones, um, when you see inclusions, it's gonna vary. Like these are morganite. You know, it's that pink barrel, like aquamarine is, is blue barrel and emerald is green barrel. These are morganite and they're bead quality material. So with the beads, we're gonna almost always have inclusions in them because if we didn't, they would facet them and get a higher price per carat, the merchant, for the uh, for the faceted material than for the bead material. But these inclusions oftentimes show make the beads show up much more beautifully because there's an opacity to them. Yeah, I love the pink too, Lee, it's beautiful. And Paulette, you say you need some tourmalines? Well, Paulette's my sister, what do you think? She can come in and look through my collection and have whatever she wants, I should say, within reason. Um, so I was talking about the bead material, and then there's cabochon quality material, aquamarine. I said that it should be clean. Well, it's readily available clean, okay, so if you can get a clean one. But have you seen, you know, the cabochons aquamarine? There's a lot of inclusions in them, but you could do something interesting with it. It has a dark color. It's not the same price per carat as a faceted aquamarine. So it's a cabochon cut. And that's how they would cut it. Now, sometimes they would choose to cut into the cabochon cut as well because when we facet the gemstones, what we're trying to do is magnify that light through them, right? So the light shoots through. Well, it tends to magnify the inclusions and sometimes could make them like a funhouse mirror where they actually show up more than they would without the facets. So that's what the cabbing material would do. The Colombians, you know, emeralds are almost always with inclusions and Colombia is a major gem producing area. They would call the inclusions within it jardin, which is a Spanish word for garden. 
And when I first started in the business, I kind of rolled my eyes. I thought, bro, oh, brother garden, they're just trying to pull one over. But as time went on and the more I thought of it, I thought it's a perfect way to think of it because we tend our garden, don't we? And things grow within the garden and, and flow and move. And that's what they do in these gemstones too. Like look at this quartz. This is a natural rock crystal, not an expensive thing. I've just been buying these things for years. I have a whole collection of all these. I can't get... I can't stop. I think they're beautiful. But doesn't that look like a garden within the gemstone? Wouldn't that be a beautiful pendant? I thought it would be. Just framed, beautiful. But that looks like a garden, doesn't it? Look at this one. This is um, quartz with, <laughs> oh, my uh, Elizabeth is saying, mm, El Jardin. El Jardin is a Mexican restaurant that we love. Um, but this is quartz, like what I showed you before, and it's growing uh, in a dendritic form with a manganese oxide. And so that forms this kind of underwater garden. And when you get this gem just right in the light, you see this like iridescent area. It looks like, I call it the octopus's garden in the shade. Another, this is from Montana. Again, it's that same, instead of growing in the dendritic pattern, like this, like, like the plants, this is like this. To me, it looks like it looks very Japanese, Japanese aesthetic. It looks like a cedar tree or an oak tree that's floating above the snow. I call it snow falling on cedars, even though it looks like an oak tree to me. And there's other really cool inclusions when you get into them. Say particularly this one. This is a, a sapphire. It's from Burma, but it has a cross. And I thought, oh, this is really cool. Instead of a metal cross, you could have a gemstone cross. There's even a hole drilled in it. So, oh, there's not a hole drilled in this one. So you could set it. I thought, oh, I'm a geologist. There's my gemstone cross. They could be really cool in different patterns, Montana sapphire. But this, I thought, I wanted to make an angelfish brooch. Doesn't that look like an angelfish? Now I'm getting carried away because I love all of these. Look at this one. This is rutile in quartz. Rutile is titanium dioxide, and it's grown in such a way that it's able to mimic the crystal, the hexagonal crystal structure of the quartz. But isn't that extraordinary? And that's what cat's eye... Uh, excuse me, star sapphires do too. It has root teal, but really finely textured, not coarse like this where it shows the gold that's um, aligning with the crystal structure so you can see that hexagonal or six-rayed stars. So that's what I wanted to talk to you a bit today about the fun of inclusions. Let's recap on this, okay? Uh, the four C's in colored gemstones, if there was a four C, would be color, 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 color. Color is what primarily uh, affects the price. We look at clarity, but we look more at clarity as whether um, the, the inclusions, what their distribution is within the gemstone, and whether they're going to create a structural defect that will affect the wear durability of a gemstone. Nevertheless, there are some gemstones that we would expect to be Eye clean and clarity, like topaz, aquamarine are good examples. And if they do have inclusions in them, they should be priced significantly less. You might like it with an inclusion, but you don't want to pay more than you should. Some gemstones, um, they, they sometimes have inclusions, and it's considered acceptable. We just want to make sure that it's not affecting the beauty of the gemstone. And other gemstones like tourmaline or emerald, almost hot, I mean, hot pink tourmaline or emerald or red tourmaline, almost always have inclusions. Very rare to find it without it. Inclusions tell us where the gemstone came from, whether it's natural or synthetic, whether it, um, what, what its provenance is, and particularly where it came from, whether it's uh, had any sort of treatment. And sometimes inclusions, we use them in such a way that they really bring out the beauty of the gemstone. Uh, it doesn't have one line on, but you can see this is a cat's eye moonstone with a carved moonstone mouse over the top of it. Okay, so, um, that's it for inclusions. I'd love to have any of your questions. Oh, Elizabeth says she loves the angelfish idea. I do too. You'll have to come over and see it or, or I could ship it to you. Um, these are all gemstones I have loose. I have so many more because I have a lifetime in the gemstone business. I'm happy to share anything with you. Answer any questions. Please let me know. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a great day.